Mortal Kombat 1 is getting an Ermac boss battle. That's right, really cool stuff. But on top of that, we're also getting new costumes completely for free and so much more. So let's talk all about it in today's video because another day means more Mortal Kombat 1 news. I'm covering it all the time on this channel. So if you want to stay up to date on Mortal Kombat 1 news, then make sure to subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss any future videos. And then after watching, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below. It helps the channel out a ton. And Without any further ado, let's begin. Starting off with the Ermac boss battle, which I find the most interesting. It's definitely going to be a titan fight, very similar to Baraka, Ashra, and General Shao, which means we might even get a new costume too, which would be awesome. However, here's the interesting thing. Ermac's not even playable yet as a DLC character, yet he's going to be a titan boss battle during Melina's invasion season, which for anyone not aware, that is the next season of invasion. It's going to be Melina. It's pretty much right around the corner, which could imply that we're going to get to fight Ermac before he's actually playable as a DLC character, which, like I said earlier, is quite interesting. I know some people in the comments are saying, oh, well, Ermac's already in the game, you can fight him in story mode. But no, 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 you must be new on this channel, because I've debunked those claims multiple times. The Ermac you fight in story mode is not going to be the DLC version. Very similar to Quan Chi in Mortal Kombat 1, yes, there is a version of him you can fight in story mode, but it's nothing like the DLC version. Not even one of his attacks is the same, despite what many haters online were trying to convince people otherwise. They kept trying to lie and deceive and say, oh my gosh, you're paying for characters that are already in the game, look at this, they're already in story mode, but Netherrealm is charging you extra, yet lo and behold, you wait a couple of months for the DLC to finally drop, and it turns out, no, Quan Chi is in fact 100% different as a DLC character than the NPC version that you fight in story mode. And that's because the NPC version is actually actually borrowing attacks from Mortal Kombat 11. And it's going to be the exact same case for Ermac in Mortal Kombat 1 as well. So I suppose the million dollar question is this, when we do fight Ermac as a titan boss battle, is he also going to be the story mode version, or is he going to be the DLC version but you can fight him earlier than you can play him? As you all know, I love making these videos interactive, so let me know your thoughts on Ermac in the comments section down below. Do you think the titan boss battle is going to be the DLC version of Ermac, or instead will it be a temporary placeholder similar to how he plays in story mode? For me personally, I think it could go either way, because don't forget, it was possible to play with Chameleon without having to actually buy her, which I personally think was pretty cool. It's like giving a car a test drive before you actually buy it. Yeah, there's always going to be fans like myself who buy the Combat Pack Season Pass right away, because we know darn well we're going to play with every single character anyway. However, for anybody else who might be on the fence and wondering if Chameleon is a character they want to spend money on, there's an option to play the character for free and give them a bit of a test drive, which I just think is awesome. But that has me wondering, what if it's the same case with the Ermac Titan boss battle? What if Netherrealm lets us fight Ermac early, that way we get an idea of how he's going to play and consider if we want to actually buy him and spend money on this DLC character. Part of me does think that could be the case, because otherwise why would Ermac be a Titan boss battle this early? Once again, he's arriving at the same time as Melina's season 4 invasion. And then on top of that, his origin is completely different for this season of invasion. Check it out. And a shout out to Interloco for giving us a sneak preview of this. Utilizing the most advanced of Shang Tsung's magic, Melina has created the perfect Ermac. There has never been a greater or more powerful collection of souls. He is many. You are one. You must destroy him. How interesting is that? It appears that Melina is actually the one responsible for making Ermac in this timeline. Or at the very least, she's the one responsible for perfecting his design. It's a bit vague, right? All we know is that Melina perfected Ermac's design. So that could imply that she made him and made him better than anybody else ever has, or it could imply that Ermac was already created by someone else first, but then Melina came along and made him superior. No matter what the case may be, I find it so interesting how this version of Melina Melina is actually an evil mastermind. Multiple times, Liu Kang says that she's actually a genius in this timeline. Great genius and wanton cruelty are two attributes one hopes not to find in the same being. Unfortunately, Melina has both. If she is not destroyed, she will turn this timeline into her personal hunting ground, and the suffering of its inhabitants 
will be exquisite. Once again, really cool stuff. Don't get me wrong, I love the new timeline Melina as well. I think it's cool how she's a good guy this time around and cares about her sister and looks after the kingdom. That's all really cool and we've never seen this version of Melina before. However, at the same time, it's also really nostalgic to see evil Melina who is tricking people, being conniving and manipulating. It's always fun to see the evil version of Melina return, but then again, I'm a massive Melina fan and have been for decades. And on top of that, get this, Melina is so smart, so genius, that she can even manipulate people into working for her. Check this out. Melina's heightened intelligence helped her realize that people in chaos are easily conquered. So she called upon her timeline's havoc to reduce our realm to anarchy. May the Elder Gods help us if he succeeds. I have to say, I definitely prefer classic Havoc. Mortal Kombat 1 Havoc's gameplay is super fun, but I hate the fact that he's from Order Realm and is actually Dairo and not even Havoc this time around. Now that being said, Ed Boon, the creator of Mortal Kombat himself, has confirmed that Story Mode is getting a Part 2, and it's also been confirmed by the writers at Netherrealm that the main villain of Part 2 is going to be Titan Havoc, just like we saw in the after credit scene for the original story mode, which has me hopeful and excited that that version of Havoc is going to be more true and classic to the original Havoc that we all know and love so much and haven't seen around since the 3D era about 20 years ago or so. It is crazy how time flies, but I really do believe it's been about 20 years since Mortal Kombat Armageddon. How insane is that? But next up, we have to talk about Baraka, and once again, it's classic Baraka from a different timeline, and unfortunately, this man and is a Melina simp like always. We're talking a tier 3 Melina simp. Poor guy, have a listen. It took little to convince Baraka to join Melina's campaign of conquest. Having always been enamored of her, Baraka sees this as the perfect chance to prove his worthiness. Yeah, out of all the characters that got changed in Mortal Kombat 1, I like Baraka's glow up the most, and I definitely don't miss this version of Baraka that was constantly chasing after Melina. Then again, I'm pretty sure in the 3D era, he actually catches on to Melina's trickery and kills her before she can betray him. So at least that version of Baraka was a giga chat at one point. It took him some time to get there, but he was not a total simp. He did turn on his master. As you can see, the Melina season of Invasion has a lot of cool stuff in store. I love this evil conniving version of Melina, I love the Ermac Titan boss battle, and a massive shout out to Enter Loco for giving us all a sneak peek of what's to come with this new season of Invasion. But last and certainly not least, do not forget that the new season of Invasion is also going to give us free costumes, mainly the evil Melina costume. However, on top of that, it's also possible that we're going to get a new version of other characters a bit earlier than their own Season of Invasion. For example, we've already got an evil Lee Mei's outfit during Natara's Season of Invasion, and we've also got an Ashura's third costume as well, which is also her evil version. So once again, keep in mind that Melina's costume is not going to be the only one that's free and doesn't cost you any money. You're also very likely going to get other costumes early as well. Which once again is really cool. I think it's awesome how Mortal Kombat 1 is always giving us new costumes for free. Even though you do have to complete invasions to get Melina's costume and grind a little bit to get the other costumes for free, it's still worth mentioning they are completely free, which is different than any other fighting game right now. I'm loving Tekken 8, it's such a blast, I recommend you check out my videos on that game, but at the same time, I don't think we're going to get any free DLC costumes for that game, and the same can also be said for Street Fighter 6. Amazing game, incredible gameplay, but anytime a new costume drops, you can rest assured that Capcom is going to charge you for it. There are no free costumes in these games, but Mortal Kombat Bad one is always giving us something for free, which I think is really cool. However, on that note, there is some drama that I wanted to comment on because most things in Mortal Kombat 1 are not free, just like most things in life are not free. And some people have noticed that if you go to the Mortal Kombat store, you can actually purchase the invasion costumes with dragon crystals. So for example, if you wanted to have Spectre Scorpion's outfit, you don't have to actually complete invasions, you can now buy it in the store. And real quick, for anyone not aware, you don't have to buy dragon crystals crystals. There's actually plenty of ways to get them for free, check out this video if you want to learn how. But I digress, some people were upset that they had to complete invasion 
mode to get the scorpion skin, while other people can just spend money and get the skin right away. And I certainly do understand that perspective, but I think people misunderstand why this costume is in the store. It's not meant to let people line jump you or invalidate the grind you did to get this costume. Instead, it's simply for people who got the game after the invasion season was over, but still want to use this scorpion skin. For example, somebody may have bought Mortal Kombat 1 last month or last week, but they still want to wear the Spectre Scorpion skin. That's actually the real reason why the Scorpion Spectre skin is in the store, despite it being unlockable through Invasion, but only Invasion Season 1, which is over now, and it's likely not going to cycle back around for like a whole year or something. However, at the same time, I know some people think that Netherrealm should just give it for free or have a different way to grind for it that doesn't cost money, and those opinions and viewpoints are valid. But one more time, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below, because like I keep saying in every single video, I truly do read each and every comment, so grab that keyboard and make your voices heard. And then while you're down there, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, it really does help my channel out a ton, and then finish that combo by subscribing and ringing that bell so you never miss any future videos. Make sure to come back next time, and as always, stay underdogs!